All right, so in the chapter 16 class notes folder, we're in the linked list class. Okay, so at the top of this is public class linked list. The first thing we wrote, which I want to review because it was Friday, um, we scrolled down to line 55 where it says class node, um, and we implemented a static nested class. Um, and again, you can click on that extension resource to read more about why it's important um, to have the static keyword here. But what I want to point out is this class, this node class, has no methods only, and has two public instance variables. We don't normally have public instance variables because it violates encapsulation, but this class is already encapsulated because it's inside of the linked list class and no other class, no other code can access it. It's not a public inner class or a public nested class. Um, so therefore it's already encapsulated and we don't need accessors. We don't need a constructor. We're just gonna set the instance variables directly. When we talk about the node in a linked list, that's not the same as like the value of the element, okay? So part of what makes chapter 16 conceptually more challenging is we have to hold in our head both the concept of a node, which is this, and the concept of the value of the element, which is actually this instance variable data. And they're two separate things, okay? And we're gonna see that emphasized as we, as we write this class today. We will have methods that like take, that get and set the value of the data here, but no public methods will ever expose the node class because that's internal to the linked list, okay? So that's an important distinction. All right, so here's our node class. So if you weren't here Friday, hopefully by now you have these five lines. That's all you missed out in terms of coding. Um, so now that we've written our node class, we're gonna scroll back up to the top of this file and we're gonna code our linked list now from scratch, okay? And so we're gonna add a comment block here, slash star enter, and we're gonna create an instance variable called first. And we're gonna explain what that means first refers to the first node in this list. If the list is empty, empty first is null. So a linked list only has a single instance variable of type node and it's called first. Okay, so it's a reference to the first node in the linked list. As I mentioned on Friday, the linked list class we're implementing is a simplified linked list. It's a singly linked list, meaning we only have a reference to the next node, um, and we only have a reference in the linked list class to the first node in the list. It is not doubly linked list. If it was, we would have a second instance variable called last, um, and our node class would have another instance variable called previous. Um, so, but we don't need that level of complexity. We're just trying to get the basics here. Also, our linked list class is not a generic, like the one in the Java standard library. Again, that's additional complexity we don't need right now. We'll worry about adding in that complexity next week. Okay. So we're taking some simplified things to, to not overload ourselves. All right, that's it. This is the only instance variable in a linked list class. So a linked list class, a linked list object, has a single instance variable which refers to the first node in the list. Okay. So to connect that to our slides, here is our linked list object, one instance variable called first that refers to the first node in our linked list. Each node has two instance variables, a reference to the node's data. We also, we also refer to that as the element that's stored in the collection and a reference to the next node in the list. All right, let's look through the rest of these methods. Constructs an empty linked list. Perfect. Um, one thing that is nice about this linked list class, I hope you appreciate today, these methods are relatively straightforward. Don't let that like trick you into a false sense of security. The linked list is a complicated class, okay? so. 
even though there's not a lot of code, there's still a lot of complexity. All right, so we need to write our constructor, our default constructor. So public linked list takes no parameters, constructs an empty linked list. Well, if the list is empty, first is null. So we just have to say this.first equals null. That's all we have to initialize. The first instance variable is already initialized to null. I like to be explicit in this case to show that it's intentional that we want it to be null because that holds special meaning. Um, if we said just first equals null here, it would be just fine. I like being explicit with this because it makes it clear that I consciously referring to the instance variable. When it matters is when there is another variable involved, like maybe a parameter also named first, then we have to say this dot first or else we re it gets shadowed. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I try to always use the this dot just to be explicit. All right, that's our default constructor. Cool, we have an empty linked list. All right, what's the next method? So we don't have to write the Java doc, it's already here for us. Returns the first element in the linked list. So basically we're emulating the Java standard library linked list or a simplified version of it. So we're gonna use all the same method names that we learned in chapter 15. So this will be a public method. It's gonna return an object, a reference to an object and it's called get first. Again, we're not doing a generic, so all of our, the type of all of the elements we're storing in our linked is of type object, okay? Interestingly, this is how Java worked um, before Java 5, okay? So in Java 5, they introduced the concept of a generic. Before then, this is how the linked list class worked. Get first always returned a reference to an object, and if you wanted to access your string or your turtle or whatever, you would have to cast it um, to the appropriate type. So we're doing we're going like old school here. All right. So we want to get the first element in the linked list. So we can say return this dot first dot data. We don't return this dot first because that would return a reference to the node of type node. This needs to return something the user is actually interested in. They don't care about the node. They're not even aware the node exists. They need a reference to the data, the element, which is of type object. What could potentially go wrong here? Yeah, this dot first could be null. In fact, if the list is empty, it is null. So we have to handle that. Um, we need to check for that case. If this dot first equals null, we need to throw an exception. We're going to emulate the behavior of the Java standard library. We've never done this before, so this is new. The way we generate an exception is we actually create an exception object and then we throw it. Okay, so the keyword we use is throw, and the thing we're throwing is a new no such element exception. This is the same behavior of the linked list in the Java standard library. If we call get first on an empty list, it returns a no such element or throws a no such element exception. We could catch it, but if we don't catch it, our program's gonna crash, okay? So this is a, a proper implementation of get first. Let's look at remove first. Okay. So again, same behavior as the Java standard library. The remove first method takes no parameters. It returns a reference to the element that was removed. So we do need to have the return type of object here. Um, we still have to check if it's empty. So I'm gonna copy and paste the check down here. If first is null, we again throw a no such element exception. But what if it's not empty? What do we need to do? This is where things get a little bit more 
complicated. So here's a, a graphic from the text that we can use to, to kind of see how things are. Let's look at this example. The top is before we remove. We have our linked list object. First refers to the first node in the list. The data for the first node in the list is the string Amy. Next refers to the next node in the list. Um, what do you think the value of next is if it's the last node in the list? No, it's going to be null. So if next has a value of null, it means there is no next node. We're at the end of the list. But if next does have a valid reference here, it refers to the next node and so on and so forth. So if we call remove first, we need to unlink this node that contains Amy um, from our linked list. And the way we do that is we simply change what first is referring to so that first doesn't refer to this node, but rather first refers to this node. Here's the challenge of the code we're writing. I said earlier, there won't be a lot of it, but conceptually it's challenging. The order in which we do these operations is absolutely critical. And it's tricky to think through where the references are stored and how we need to access them to maintain our links correctly. So in this case, we want to change the value of first, but what do we set it to? The thing we set it to is the reference stored in this node that holds on to Amy. We need to set it to this reference. So the value we want to store in first is going to be first.next gets us that value. Okay. And that's where things start to get a little bit tricky. So let's see this in code, and then we can go back and look at the picture. First thing I'm going to do is grab a reference to the element. So I'm going to say this.first.data. I'm going to store that reference. That will be to the string Amy in our example. Then we will change the value of first to first.next. And then we can return element. Even here, this is a relatively straightforward method, but we can already see that the order is critical. If we grab a reference to the data after we've already changed what first refers to, we're going to get the value for the wrong element, right? So we have to get this first before we change the value of this dot first. And I know you're used to this because you've been doing this for a long time, but I still think it's somewhat confusing when we do these types of assignment in Java where we're using the instance variable on the right with its like current value to get at the new value, which we're then going to replace the value with and store it, right? That's still, I think, a tricky concept. Um, but this dot first equals this dot first dot next. There's a lot going on in this, like those five words. But these three lines of code is what's in this picture of changing first to refer to this node and then returning a reference to this data here. Questions at this point? All right. Removing isn't so bad. Let's talk about inserting. Okay. When we want to insert a new node at the front of our linked list, there are three steps we have to go to, and they're numbered here, one, two, three, because again, the order really matters, right? So here's our existing linked list. First refers to this node here, whose data is Diana, and then there's the rest of the list. We want to insert a value of Amy at the beginning of our linked list. Step one, we need to make a new node, right? We need to create a new node class. We have the reference to Amy, but we don't have a node yet. So we have to make a new node. We have to initialize data, data to refer to Amy. So we have this node. Then we have to get, we have to link this node into this linked list. 
And we can't reverse steps two and three. We got to go in this order. First, we have to set the new node we created. Its next instance variable needs to refer to the first node in the linked list. And only then can we update the first instance variable to refer to the new node. If we swap steps two and three, we like lose our nodes, right? We, we have no way to get at the node storing Diana. So the order is the order is critical. So I'm gonna actually add comments in this code as we type this that match that slide so that later you can go back and like connect each line of code to each of those three steps. Okay, so step one. Oh wait, let's write the method header first. Public void add first. It takes one parameter, which is the element to add. What is the type of this parameter? Object, not node. Node won't show up in a public method. I'm going to keep calling it element. Step number one, we need to make a new node. That's pretty easy. And we need to initialize its data. So we're going to say new node.data equals element. We've made a new node. We've stored the value, uh, the reference to the element in that node with the data. Um, we're good to go. Step number two. Let's look back at the graphic. Step number two is to set the value of this new node's next instance variable to the current first node in the linked list. What does that look like? new node dot next equals this dot first. Step number three we update first to refer to the new node. This dot first equals new node. While at this point in your Java programming career, you're very used to like the types and that types have to match and all of this stuff. But I think when the code gets more complicated, it's still helpful to like fall back and double check that and be like, well, the thing I assigned to first has to be of type node. The thing I assigned to next has to be of type node. The thing I assigned to data has to be of type object, right? That reinforces that your types match. The compiler is going to reinforce that too, right? If I do the wrong thing here, if I say something like element here, it's not going to compile. It's going to yell at me. Oops. Um, so that helps too, but it's good to like think through it. This is cool. We just implemented all of the essential methods, almost all of the essential methods on our linked list class.